I said earlier, I said we're still kind of in a blur since since that uh, since that storm came in. But uh, I think the storm hit on Friday, and and we really you know realized that it was going to be imminent middle of the week, and so by Wednesday we were we were kind of you know, securing things, tying things down, moving things indoors, um, and and by Friday most of our most of our staff was gone. Uh, we uh, uh, I really got a chance to go kind of take care of my own personal stuff uh, uh, on that day as well. And Friday night, the storm hit in Rockport, Texas, which is about 120 miles south of here and about 25 miles from, from our Taft location. Uh, and then it hovered around Victoria for uh, about, about 10 hours. And just that's our newest facility. Um, both those facilities had some wind damage. And uh, and some some water damage, not from rising water, but just some inundated, uh, you know, wind and wind and rain event. Uh, and then it just stuck around. I, it was you know it was uh, it was really something like we'd never experienced before. We we uh, I'm pretty sure Harvey was pissed off at me because I mean it's it just went from one of my locations to the other, and and uh, then when it finally made it through this area west of Houston. It went offshore, and the doggone thing turned around and went into Beaumont, and wound up uh, getting the the most severe damage of all the locations because it actually flooded a couple feet of water in my in my known facility, which is on the edge of Beaumont. We can handle business disruption at one location. We've seen that before. We've had hurricanes hit one location and mess it up for two, three, four weeks. But when you have your entire complex that's disrupted for you know, essentially out of business for for a couple of weeks. Uh, it's it's really it's really devastating. Uh, you know, that being said, you know, there's so many people that had it so much worse. Uh, you know, we we have uh, about about 15 of our employees that had homes flooded. Uh, some of some of them run. Uh, we had the Western Equipment Dealers. Uh, foundation has uh, uh, has has grants available for for employees of dealerships, and I think we had 38 employees that that qualified for those grants. So it was it's it, you know it's highly disruptive for them and their families, and we're still feeling that because because it's almost it's almost not a day goes by that we don't have an employee that's meeting with an insurance adjuster, an employee that's. It's seeking some medical attention due to some infections they got in floodwaters, and um, you know, if, if I wasn't doing this interview, I'd be working on insurance claims right now myself. Uh, so it, uh, it's just something you got to overcome. But it just it it uh, you don't know where you find the time sometimes to be able to do that and try to run your business. It, just just losing electricity and losing uh, connectivity on the phones. It, our phones. Uh, and computers were uh, disrupted for for a month. Uh, it's still still not perfect. But but they literally my my staff literally could not get to work because the roads were flooded between all these towns and and we most of our businesses are in small towns and half of our employees or more drive from out of town to to come to work. East Bernard, for instance, is on a crossroads and and three out of the four roads leading out of town were flooded. So the only you could go to Los Angeles, you could go back to I-10 and go to San Antonio, but you couldn't go any other direction. It just it was impossible. The roads were out. Uh, so there was just so so many challenges to, to getting reopened. But uh, you know, because of the eff great effort of, of our staff, we we you know we we were we didn't miss many opportunities to to get back and and help support the, the folks that needed the help. And I can tell you that, that my, my staff uh, and, the, and the community at large, whether, whether it was East Bernard or Wharton or, or, or the city of Houston or Beaumont, the, the volunteerism um, was, was phenomenal. And we had, we had staff members. I, I, I worked in some rescue uh, recovery type operations. We, we had a, one of our technicians here was in one of those boats taking people out of their homes in Houston. Uh, it was, you know, in, in the kind of the worst of times, you can see the best of, of, 
of people as well, and that was that was very uh, uh, heartening to uh, to see that. Yeah. It's a just thinking about it here today when we were in your office. Just the amount of unproductive time. What what would otherwise have been productive time is is got to be a huge factor. You're you're dealing with insurance. I, I'm still I'm still on the physical damage part. I haven't even got to <laughs> oh, this, yeah, this disruption yeah. yet, okay. and. And so that's going to be really complicated and, you know, forensic accounting and all different types of methodology to, to make those determinations. Um, and it's just wasn't in the tractor business. It was in, you know, it was in our automobile business. It was in our amusement businesses. We were down for, for a couple of the biggest weekends of the, of the year. Uh, just, just, it, 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 I don't know when we'll get it all figured out, but, but we're working on it. So first of all, I'll tell you, we, we had the uh, crop for the record, I mean, for all the ages, and it was, it, it was a phenomenal crop that we had growing. The southern half of the territory uh, had pretty well finished their cotton harvest. The, the northern part had just really started, and, and a handful of people had not started at all yet. Uh, and generally speaking, the, the later the cotton, the better it is. So some of the better cotton was still out in the field, uh, when it started raining, uh, and it rained for the better part of a week without stopping. You know, it was uh, some of the cotton had 50 inches of rain on it. Uh, the record in, in East Texas, I think, was 61 or 62 inches. Uh, but but uh, th there's not cotton in that area. But in this area, 35 to 50 inches of rain was not uh, unheard of. Uh, we would have thought that we were going to lose all the crop. We've we've, we've the, the, the lint has seeds in it and the seed stays wet long enough it would generally sprout and, and uh, uh, some of it washes out on the ground, some of it blows out on the ground. The, the cotton would uh, stood up better than we expected it to, but we started from a really high place, uh, you know, three play bell plus cotton, which, which is just, you know, doesn't happen it just across the board. I mean, sure, that every, once in a while we, farmers will have you know, a field here or there that makes three bells plus, but that was going to be an average for the for the area this year, and and we lost probably a bell uh, of cotton of lint in the field, and, and ten cents, a uh, ten percent of our our market value on the crop as well. So you know, close, close it took 40 percent uh, hit probably on the harvested acres, but but there were a number of acres that were not harvested at all because they were in the river bottoms and they were completely flooded and uh, and some some of uh, it was it was uh, it was specific growers that were that were impacted you know unfairly because they just they, they lost some of the guys lost all all of it and the uh, the cotton that was harvested early uh, before the storm uh, again, most of that was on the southern half of the territory. In, in East Bernard community, there were two growers that had finished harvesting cotton, but there were more than two that hadn't started yet. Uh, but even the cotton that was that was harvested, you may have seen pictures of it. The, the the cotton goes from the field to a cotton gin, you know, and then ultimately to a mill. But the uh, most of that cotton was somewhere between the field and the cotton gins, and the and the wind and the and the driving rains. Uh, demolished a lot of that cotton before it was uh, before it was ginned. It didn't it didn't discriminate you know, the different kind of modules. There's you know round modules and long rectangular modules and short rectangular modules and uh, they they all they all had their challenges. Uh, but we're uh, uh, we're going to test we're going to test the insurance limits on some of these these cotton gins this year. I think.